I've made it very known. I'm not the biggest fan of this brand, right? I feel like I don't really get on my like race shit, bra bra bra. I think the whole race card thing's a bit lame. I think in general, you know, life should be a meritocracy and the greatest best person, regardless of the gender, um, regardless of their sexual orientation, regardless of their fucking race, color, creed, or whatever nonsense, should get the job at all points. But I'm also firmly and obviously aware of how different structures and systems allow certain people to rise to the top and certain people not. So with that being said, I fucking hate Kid Super. I think the stuff is fucking shit, right? It probably be- it probably doesn't even belong in H and M. It's fucking basic, shitty, crappy stuff from a kid that used to. You know that kid used to draw in your class. He could draw, but it was never good, right? He starts making clothes. Terrible stuff. But you have to give the guy credit for his ability to assemble three of the most random people ever in one room during his after party for his collection at Paris Fashion Week. You have to give the guy credit because somehow this guy managed to get gigs, Ronaldinho and Jim Jones all in the same room. <laughs> That's fucking incredible. Give the guy props. The clothes fucking suck. No idea how he won the LVMH prize, but when it comes to cultural significance, when it comes to having your tss, finger on the pulse and being a part of the cultural zeitgeist and putting out stuff that people want to see, this is it. A combination of gigs, Ronaldinho and Jim Jones all in the same room is fucking incredible. Let's play the clip. So, amazing moment to see that, right? Amazing moment. And I have to give the guy, honestly, all the credit and props. And this maybe explains why some of the big houses really would rather have these kind of like streetwear adjacent guys getting involved. Because for some reason, actual fashion designers don't have this kind of cultural scope. I don't know why it is. Like, J.W. Anderson has way more talent and he's left pinky toe than Kid Super. But is he aware of who Giggs is? Does he know who Ronaldinho is? Can he even kick a ball? Does he know who Jim Jones is? Probably not. But if you ask him to design a, ca- a collection for you, he could do it with his eyes closed and his hands behind his back and a pencil in his mouth. So I find that very interesting how the best designers are the best designers. But in terms of cultural impact, in terms of having the ability to galvanize people or to kind of grab people's attention, especially the wider demographic, or maybe bring all these different groups of people together from, again, Giggs is a very local UK hood hero, right? He's basically our version of Jay-Z in some respect. Ronaldinho is one of those, the streets will never forget footballers but you have to be there to kind of experience his greatness and of course jim jones is one of the greatest hype men turned into artists that's ever been in the history of hip-hop right amazing flipping guy only flipping blemish on his record is how he fucking um blackboard and kind of bad-minded max b but that's a really personal street beef i'm not really going to get involved in and free max b by the way but i find that really incredible i find that the most interesting part of it this ability to baby and again this is doing this is like loose and easy I'm sure these interactions were done and done, you know, if you ask the kid super guy, they were done very easily. DM, someone knows somebody just kind of figured it out and it all kind of worked in real time. And one of the other clips I really like is the clip of Ronaldinho walking on the fucking catwalk. Look at that. Look at that. Again, forget the clothes. The clothes suck. But look at Ronaldinho walking down the road. Like, why hasn't this happened before? Why hasn't Ronaldinho, one of the most, one of the greatest footballers to ever grace football, a, a, one of the only footballers who I'm still to this day, maybe him and Alan Shearer are two of the sh- people that I so regret we never end up signing United. There was a chance that we were going to sign Shearer, he ended up going to Newcastle. There was a sign, time we were going to sign Ronaldinho, he was at PSG, he ended up going to Barcelona. Those are two of the players that I would have given everything for Man United to sign because they would have changed the course of our history. But, one of the greatest footballers ever. Why hasn't he ever walked a fucking runway before? Considering how he looks, considering his impact culturally, why hasn't he ever been on the runway? Why did he have to take Kid Super to do it? Why? King. King. Look at him. You gotta love it. You gotta flipping love it. Honestly, I'm like, and again, this is why I think a lot of fashion designers, for as much as they, like, I can understand the frustration 
of being a fashion designer and you know busting your like nowadays what's the tuition like like 10 grand or something maybe more busting your ass getting a master's to try and you know separate yourself from the pack and then having to like imagine having to get a master's to separate yourself from the fashion pack then graduating from that with a degree and a master's in fashion and then having to work as an intern for 22,000 to 26,000 a year if that for some designer that's a piece of shit to you behind the scenes but has a great image in public so you can't really say nothing right so you're stuck in this fucking hellhole where you're patent cutting for an absolute tyrant but you've got all this fucking ability and education and then you see Matthew Williams getting a Givenchy job. I can understand why that can make you piss off. But the reason why those guys get the job is because they have such a wide scope on different cultures and subcultures and genres and scenes and whatever it may be and appeals that they mostly get from doing their own brand or just being a cultural influence or all this sort of stuff. They have all of that stuff. And that's I think sometimes fashion designers are a little bit too narrow-minded, you know? They don't really have much more outside of life apart from fashion they obsess about it way too much which is why sometimes it makes fashion conversations really dull because i feel like like when i used to watch show studio i don't watch it anymore um because i think all the great hosts and the people on the panel aren't really there anymore but when i used to really watch show studio one of the things i used to like one of the things sorry i used to hate about show studios was the fact that they would always have a lot of industry insiders who never actually bought any of the things they weren't consumers they were just critics but critics without the humor i think one of the one of the only one of the only ways you can critique nowadays because people are so sensitive um, is with a bit of humor. If you critique and it's just coming across really snarky, like Kathy Horn's a good example of it. Love her writing, but she comes across like a miserable bitch, right? Not her fault. Maybe that's her de deposition, whatever it may be. But I think you have to have a bit of humor in it. And without the humor, it just comes across like hate. But obviously those things kind of parlay into the other. You know what I mean? So there's not good criticism. Um, there's not an ability on the platform out there for people to put out their stuff. There's a bit too much navel gazing, inside baseball talk, not enough conversation with actual real consumers. Like those show studio panels, like why wouldn't you, if you're doing a Balenciaga show, right? Why wouldn't you have one of the, why, why not get one of the biggest spenders to, 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 be on a, to be on a panel? Why just have like five people who are critics and who want Balenciaga to go back to how it was when Cristobal Balenciaga was there uh, or Return to Hot Couture? Why, why not have like an actual Asian guy, an actual black kid who buys that shit all the fucking time, right? Just to fucking look swaggy. Why not have them on the panel as well to mix it up a little bit? Having those people, it, it, it'll kind of give you an, a better understanding as to why these guys and girls have such a big kind of grip on fashion because really and truly there's only like five or six people that are really moving things right and most of it is for a reason there's a reason why people keep buying like you know keep buying those fucking hermes sandals which is the fucking hate strap on it there's a reason why people buy gucci belts the reason why people buy fucking Valen louis vuitton fucking bags do you know what i mean because it's the best in class it's what people kind of maybe you know hold up on the pedestal wherever it may be all these things are important but there's too much like inside baseball talk i want it to be a bit more broad you know but hey what do i know what do I know? Uh, moving on from this one. What are, you, what are we saying in the stream chat? Um, this is me and my PJs with the American gangster coat on. <laughs> NJ Ranger, respect Ronaldinho. Sorry, respect his gangster. Respect Ronaldinho, all right? That's not PJs, man. That's called swag, okay? Respect Ronaldinho. Have some respect. <laughs> Models are upset. Exactly. Love your stream so much. Thank you, Mushy Doll. Um, <laughs> everyone's saying jammies. Okay, cool. No one likes Ronaldinho's vibe. Okay, fair enough. Uh, special Roman, I think the issue is design students have no range. I just graduated from CSM and most of these kids don't know shit about shit outside of art, history, and LBGQ art and films. Yeah, that's... That that probably might that 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 probably might be it. Maybe it's just not encouraged, which makes sense though. Really, to be fair, like, I'm, and I'm and I'm saying this from a a streetwear person's point of view, right? A streetwear kid's point of view who kind of discovered fashion through streetwear type of thing. I didn't come through fashion to get to streetwear. So um, I'm gonna say this. I'm gonna say this. I think to be actually great at what you do, you have to be hyper specific. You have to only really focus on that one thing. All great people in their actual field aren't, you know, multi-hyphenates, right? They're not, they don't have slashes, slashes all over their name. They are hyper-focused on what they do. And I think in fashion, to really separate yourself from the pack, 
you kind of have to be hyper focused. You can't afford to have all these other interests. You can't start DJing. You can't have a little side label. You can't, you know, have a boutique that sells vases. You can't have a little studio that you have. You can't have a little agency. Nah, 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 nah. You just got to be focused on fucking pattern cutting. You got to be focused on trying to reinvent the bomber jacket every fucking season. That's what you got to do. You got to be focusing on rivets. You got to be fucking on, you know, on flies, on buttons. That's what you got to be doing every single day. You have to, because if not, you know, the other people come and take you over. So maybe that's part of it. <laughs> Asad needs more cotton reef. More. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> needs more cotton reef. Fucking hell. Big up Tremaine. Big up Tremaine. What a fucking legend.